McAllister of South Carolina Maritime Museum. And this is Walt Postal, who's been helping out at the museum for the last three weeks in a research project for his, his school in Virginia. And uh, he's going to explain to you the project that he's been doing for us. Like you said, I'm Walt Postal, uh, I'm an intern, intern student here for uh, South Carolina Maritime Museum. Our display is titled Low Country Waterways, Commerce and Transportation of the Late 1800s. Basically we wanted to show a flow diagram of how water transportation was promoted by steamboats and steamships. In 1888, the building where the River Room Restaurant is now located was a general store owned by Mr. John Burnish Steele. The store was called J.B. Steele Grocery and Dry Goods Store. Our display was made possible by the fact that the owners of the River Room Restaurant, Sid Hood and Sally Swineford, found receipts, correspondence, invoices, and many other historical documents in the attic of the building. The store was a general store that sold everything from plows, muskets, brooms, and grease. Basically, any kind of item that the plantation owners needed or other local customers needed, they could get it at J.B. Steele's store. Mr. Steele had a sales agent in New York that would find wholesalers and manufacturers. This would enable Steele to buy his items in bulk. These wholesalers and manufacturers were usually located in major cities such as Baltimore, Philadelphia, and St. Louis. These wholesale items would then be shipped to Georgetown by Cod Line steamships. We have a couple of other invoices displayed with, with pretty elaborate letterheads that we thought were very interesting. Then we moved to trying to show the importance of the steamboats in the waterways. Mr. Steele would use the services of these steamboats to transport goods to his customers. We have to remember that everything was, was basically transported by water back then. So, there's no cars uh, running around trying to make any deliveries and no big trucks. But, um, the steamboats basically transported everything from J.B. Steel store to uh, the plantation owners and other local customers around the area. Finally, we have a letter written by Mrs. Elizabeth Pringle, also known as Mrs. Elizabeth Pringle Austin. She was a famous writer who wrote The, the Woman Rice Planter and The Chronicles of Chicora Wood. Her writing style was very elegant and interesting to me, and, and it gives us a sense of her wealth and education. In the letters concerning a stovepipe, that Miss Pringle ordered from Mr. Steele. She had originally ordered a pipe that was rusted or damaged in certain areas and she wanted to replace it with the galvanized pipe. The galvanized pipe would be a lot safer and probably last longer. And the fact that the letter came from Chicor Wood Plantation, which is a local plantation, it is very interesting as well. Finally, we have a book with numerous documents that Sally and Sid found that the visitors will be able to flip through to their own benefit. We want people to be able to look, look through the book and interact with some of our local history. The overall objective of the display was to tie water transportation and commerce of the late 1800s into the Maritime Museum, and I think we have done that. I'm Susan Sanders, director of the museum. And I can't tell you how excited we are to have Walt do this project. He has um, investigated all this, it's helped him in his educational process, and it's afforded us to have a brand new exhibit for the museum, so we're, it's a win-win for all of us, and we really appreciate it.